Greetings, everyone. Those who haven't watched it, go see this. Well, if you want to, go see the CDs of last year. Manasvin, Nivedin, Garima, and Shanti. Because this is how we start the class with just a focus on incarnation. Feel the density of your body, embrace it. Patiently, yeah? without, without violence, without too much force, just gladly be incarnate. Black eyes, brown skin. That's a nice name. All right, my usual crew is now online. Incarnate. Focus on the body. Last week's teaching was on entropy. Organized chaos and the permanent state of change that is ensured by the universe in its fundamental laws. <laughs> this week, we, we start with the same attitude that we're going to look inside in our own body. Our cells, as they are, are always changing. Some die, some are born, some are made, some are repaired and healed, some are not. Our body changes, regenerates. Our senses tells us that we are fixed. If you have more than a decade of life, <laughs> you've seen your body change. You've got enough mind to see your body change. And if you've got 60, 70 years of life, you've seen your body change. Oh, yeah. I imagine you have. This entropy we were talking about last week, it's in our cells. And I would even say almost on a daily basis. Pay attention to yourselves, to yourself inside. Your senses will tell you that you are fixed in time. Memory will tell you that your body changed over a long time. And your senses tell you that day to day you're just the same person. Except these rare times when you wake up and you know your body is not what it was yesterday. <laughs> there are moments like this, indeed. <laughs> but otherwise, we have this, this weird sensation that we're just the same person. And slowly we change, but daily. Daily there is change. Not for the bones and the muscles. Yeah, it lasts a while. Okay. But it changes. For the organs, it changes a bit faster. And for the liquids, for the other types of substances, it changes by the minute. So today, mostly a contemplation 
to find harmony and to join with this power, this energy inside us of change. Now, this anthropic change in our cells, our cells are constantly changing, evolving, modulating, regenerating, some die, some are reborn, some heal, some don't. We're constantly changing, physically. We just contemplate it. For those who know the CD and care to apply it. Contemplate and try to feel it. Anima. So subtle. So refined. At the microcosmic level. Or microcosmic. What, what did I just say? Microscopic. Yeah, that's a word. Everything's so small. Ever-changing. Now, what I was telling last week about every snowflake is not the same. None of your cells are identical in the same way. And for each cells born, while they look identical, well, if you would see them in the microscope, they're inherently anthropic. None of your cells will ever be identical to any of your cells that you had over your entire lifetime. The contemplation this week is just to be aware of that. To take the time to feel the body. And what I hope to achieve here is to destabilize the, the false sense of security that we know how we are and what we're made of. Contemplate this idea of always a bit different, always changing, evolving. At the cellular level, always different and changing. None of our cells are identical to any other cells we ever had. Even at the physical level, we can't possibly be the same person, identical, as we have been in the past. Change is imminent and permanent. It is a constant. As you cultivate a better mind, and take care of your body, exercise, good food, that kind of stuff. That change is beneficial. It heals your body. It aims at making you better. Just embrace this constant modulation and evolution. And try to feel it deep inside you. The more you embrace that change, the more you realize it's a power. But it unroots security. The conception of this is how we are, knowing ourselves. The conceptions of knowing what we can count on. Because we're always changing a bit different. Manazin, Nivedin, Garima, Shanti. Now that we've tuned into the body and contemplated it for a few minutes, this is true of your chi. 
your energy in your body. This is all true of your emotions, your potentials, and your thoughts, and your intellect, and your mind. It is also true of your Dharma, and your Karma, and your identity. You are always modulating and changing and evolving at all planes. Now, let's go to the emotional and mental level, okay? The thoughts you have, the, the identity, the construct, constantly different every day. Every thought, not the same as it was yesterday. In the same way. On the surface, it seems to be the same. You remember that 2 plus 2 equals 4. Yeah, that's very Cartesian and ingrained. It's also uh, at the decimal level a universal fact. At the, the arithmetic level, if you want. So even if we are changing, we can still observe facts on how the world is made. They are as they are. But what composes you, who you are observing the facts of the universe, you are changing. Let's go at it again. Sorry about that. Forgot to shut my phone systems before class. Let's go at it again, like I said. The facts we observe, that the walls are straight, that the color is dark blue, for me at least, that there's a light in front of my face. Um, the facts that we observe, 2 plus 2 equals 4, and arithmetically speaking, it always will, because that's a universal truth. This is permanent. But me, as a human being, Observing that, I'm changing. Sorry for the disturbance. Next time I'll try to remember to shut down my phone functions as I always do. Let's go at it again. While universal laws remain the same, me as the observer, the one who experiences it, I'm evolving constantly. My mind thinking 2 plus 2 equals 4 is not the same mind I had yesterday thinking 2 plus 2 equals 4. That's an important thing to understand. That there are things that will never change in the universe, but I am not one of those. The basis of the construct of the universe is always going to be the same natural laws, the fundamental and universal laws. However, me in this environment will never be the same as I was moments before. That is the, that is the contemplation that we want to have this week. We're changing at a cellular level, but also at the emotional and mental level. The same trauma that I had, the potential of trauma that I had when I was 10, 12, 15 year old, appears to be the same because it appears to be fixed, but even inside, it's changing. Even the way I look at it, it's changing. Even the memory I have, exactly, is changing. That is something that astounds um, psychologists and psychiatric doctors and neurologists also the fact that our memory is never exactly the same day by day 
Basically, to take the words of Fred Allen Wolf, every time we remember something, we alter ever so lightly that memory. Every time that we remember an event, the fact that our mind paid attention to it, that you accessed it, it has changed just a bit. So two people remembering the same event the next day, they'll remember it pretty much the same way. Ten years after, they remember different stories. Ever so slightly changed. Now, if you ever had an argument in a couple <laughs> with your lover, you, you have to agree that both of you remember things very differently. Because the more emotion is involved, the more we even alter our perception. And every time we address a memory, we alter it. We can't really know for a fact exactly what happened. Yeah, that was that was an interesting read on the topic a few decades back. Now, if you know me, you know I never tell a story exactly as it was. But that's a character flaw. That's the fact that I so much not care for facts. And it's a problem. I should care for facts more. I care mostly about the impact of what I'm going to tell. I could just say, hey, here's a story I just invented. It's based on a true story, but I don't remember the true story. I should just be honest about it. <laughs> That's a bit unsettling. The fact that the more you accept entropy as a fundamental law at the base of yourself, the more you accept the chaos that modulates you, the less you will care about the precision of fact. Not very compatible with today's society. Was compatible with society a long time ago when nothing was really written or recorded. We are changing contemplated it is not reassuring to know that we cannot even really count on ourself our memory our mind to know who we are and that is perfect because if we can't really count on what builds us then we have no other choice than to count on faith and hope. Real hope and not false hope. Real hope. Hope based on nothing. Hope, hope as a power, you know, supreme positivity. Hope that brings creativity and solutions. And faith. Faith in something surpasses us and we're going to follow the flow with the best of our reality and ability and it will be fine the fundamental rules on upon which the universe is built are immutable but everything that is built on these immutable rules what is built that always changes because one of these fundamental rules is entropy. Ever change. Nothing like it was before. A little joke is two old men with their pipes on a balcony swinging. Yeah. <clears throat> Entropy isn't what it used to be. It's a little joke for those who care. <laughs> Entropy isn't what it used to be. <laughs> that's the point. That's, that's the funniest thing about it. 
yeah, not the most pleasant conference I gave online or in person. Not the most interesting, but fundamentally essential in the wisdom of this year. Yeah. Next week is a bit more technique, yeah. applying meditation, maybe city again, stuff like that. But I want us to grasp the philosophy and entropy. Last week, we understood the basic of entropy by looking at the world that was made. Now we're looking inside and seeing how we can't even count on exactly knowing who we are because the change is permanent. And we don't know what changed because it did. That's a bit funky. Yeah. Embrace it. Yeah. No other choice than to have faith and hope once you embrace that. And it's okay. It's closer to how a soul evolves. A soul just flows. You know, I said entropy was... Like every cell is ever changing and then your life, your chi will never flow exactly as it was. Like a thermodynamic system in a ventilation of a building or, or the convection of water in your uh, boiling pot of pasta. The cells in your body, the same. They will never be exactly identical. Even if you comb your hair exactly the same way every day, they will never fall in place exactly how they did yesterday. Never will happen. It's interesting. So in your thoughts, in your emotions is the same. Now in the Dharma and in the Karma, and this is how a soul experiences things, it's just a constant flow the ebb and flow of evolution and modulation. Just try to feel it. Try to understand intellectually the topic, but also try to feel it. It is in our ego, in our identity, in our need of security, in our false hopes and over-certainties, that we need to believe we know who we are, that we are in a certain way, that we have a soul name that always will be that soul name because this is who we are and, and even, you know, soul name might change over a millionaire. It'll take time, but we evolve as a soul, so of course we will change. Uh, you can add on to this that a soul name is how we perceive it today as humans, because the soul doesn't have a name anyway. It's beyond words. So yeah, of course a soul name changes because, you know, a soul name is a human thing. It's the human that calls upon the formless, nameless. So we can't even count on that. There is beauty in that change. There is beauty in that evolution. That renewal. There is a continuity. It is still us. Like I am me. You are you. But that me changes. That you changes. It's always evolving. This week, if you can um, look at it when you eat a meal, the food in your plate has never been positioned or made exactly as it was any other time before in your life. You make a salad, it more or less looks the same way, but there's not a single leaf exactly in the position it was before. Now, you'll think, but that's obvious. 
realize it. Realize it every time you eat, every time you're in front of a plate of food. Just take a moment to realize it. The food stuff itself is different. Every leaf of lettuce, every muscle of meat never has grown exactly like another in the story of the universe. And when you look at it in your plate, you'll see that is, this is a completely new plate. This is completely new experience for me. Although it pretty much tastes the same. The same, haha, <laughs> you think. It is not the same. It's ever so lightly different. No, that's another interesting fact. A flavor you like, you think it's always the same, even if you eat the thing you like often because you like it, but you always taste it a bit differently. Sometimes because of your own body chemistry, your sensation of it will differ. Uh, you can make an experiment with uh, salt. Yeah. Moist your salt with your saliva, dip it in, uh, moist your finger, dip it in salt and taste it. And sometimes you'll feel Ugh. salt, Ugh. too much. And sometimes you feel, ah, that felt so good, salt. That depends on if your body needs salt or has too much. So the feeling of disgust or attraction depends on your immediate response to how much you feel you need in your body. That's just an experiment with salt that you do. If you do every day, you will have a different response to just straight salt. And that shows that we respond differently to spices and, and flavors. So if you push it to the limit and over the edge, even though what you like, the kind of food you prefer, tastes more or less the same, it's always going to taste a tad different. Let's see how it tastes today. Still, you know, you like it, of course, because on the surface, it looks to be the same. There's, there's a form of stability. It's over a decade, maybe a lifetime that your taste will evolve. When I was eight, I couldn't stand asparagus. And when I was just a few years after, I loved asparagus and I still do. It is like that, right? So that's a little experiment with food this week. That's the homework for those who care to do it. Just realize the entropy of food placement. It's ridiculous. I know it seems to be so basic and almost infantile, but it's just to let you realize, just do the practice, do the practice. The food is placed in a different way. It cannot possibly have been the identical meal that I had. My experience of it will not be identical. Accept change, just train, just do it. And you'll realize what it, it doesn't provoke anything inside it except that acceptation. It makes you accept that fundamental entropy. And that will be, that will be interesting. All right, peace. See you next week for Less, a bit less philosophy and uh, more technical practice. All right.